Hi, welcome to this video where we are going to migrate a Liquid Files version 3 system to a freshly installed Liquid Files version 4 system. The process for migrating is, is really the same regardless if we are moving from, in this case, to VMware machines uh, running on the same network to if we're running on over a long distance between two data centers or say that this would be a v local VMware server and this would be in, uh, in some cloud de deployment somewhere. The only difference in cloud deployment, we don't, we don't typically have access to the console. So we, we, in that case, we will have to, to log on to the system uh, using SSH and we will show how that type of migration works a little bit later. But in this case, we have access to the console and this is going to be the simplest way if you do. So first we begin by pressing F1 and we can log on to this system as root. We run the command ft migrate and say that we will we want to migrate from this system. We have we are now pre presented with this option, and this is really a question: Do you want to test do a test migration to this system, or is this the final production? migration to this system. So if you just want to do a test migration, then you don't really care if the data on this system changes or not. So if there's still users logged on and they are sending files uh, after this migration has happened, so the, so the two systems are now no longer you know, in, in sync, we don't really care about that. We just want to do a test to see that everything works as expected. For production migrations, we want to uh, we want to disable this this system here to the left. We want to disable the old system so that we know that from now onwards there is not going to be any changes to this system because this is now going to be the production system moving forward. In this case, we're going to do a test migration. So we select option number one, and there's going to be some things happening in background in the background. The migration protocol that my, uh, we're using rsync, so rsync has been open on, on rsync has been open on this system, and this is the password that we can use to connect to this system for uh, for migration purposes. So in this case, we are just on. Uh, we just installed this system here. So we are on the getting started information and, and this is something that has changed now in version 4. So from version 4 onwards, we don't actually have to go through the getting started information, the getting started to set up the system before we do a migration. So we've simplified the migration. So instead, we're going to press escape to uh, um, disable that, that pop-up screen. And then we're going to press F2. So for the F2 setup, and we're presented with this menu. So in this case, we are going to select option number 21, which is migrate. So now we have a, we have a couple of new options that, that wasn't available in version 3 and before. We can also do a restore without actually going through the getting started. In this case, we want to migrate. So we press 21 and we're launching the migration. When we do these migrations, uh, then everything on this system that we're migrating to will be overwritten. Any, anything, that, any changes that you've made, any files that, that's on here, um, any uses you, you configure, any form of setting will be overwritten and this system will be made in, into a copy of this system. In this case, this is just freshly installed, so we don't care. Do you want to continue? And we are, uh, we are copying from, this, from the system to the left, which has an IP address of 172.16.5.128. And 
and the password as we can see is p h e a w a i w a e do you want to replace the ssl certificate so this is again if a little bit if we're doing test migrations or production migrations so the ssl certificate is uh, 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 has to do with the host name so the, uh, so if you're planning to do planning to do a, a complete migration you can do this if you're just doing a test migration there is no real reason to do the to, to move the SSL certificate in this case we won't we are testing the migration so we're just opening an RSync connection to the test system and that succeeds and then we will see the data getting copied over and including the database, any users, any files that's on the, on the source system will now be copied over in about 10 seconds. And we can see this has now completed. We press indicate to continue. We get back to the menu. We quit by pressing 23. And we're back here. We can now also press Ctrl C to disable the migration on this system. We can log out of this system and when we look back here now the boot menu has updated and the migration has completed successfully so if we now look on the web interface we have two tabs so this is the system to the to the left so this is the this system here uh, files at liquidftest.com the host name hasn't been updated here, and uh, we uh, but we can see the IP address uh, 252.224 at the end, so 252.224. So if we begin at logging on to this system, we can see, for instance, that we only have the one user configured because this is a test system, and with a little bit of luck, we should be able to log on to this system as well with the same username and we can because the systems are now identical and we can see that we have the same user configured here so that is doing a complete test migration from a version 3 to a version 4 system we can also look in the hostname and url and we can see that the system host name has not been updated, uh, whereas the public URL has. So anything system related like IP addresses, system host name, network routing, anything like that, we don't migrate uh, when we're doing this migration because you may be moving this system between two data centers with, with wildly different IP addressing and so on. Whereas anything liquid files related, so the public URL in this sense or anything sort of in the configuration menu, anything like that, users, groups, any data that's been sent, everything like that is being migrated. Right, so let's move on to the sort of final migration. 
And just as a test to see how this, uh, how this works, let's add a couple of users. So let's first add a user two. So this is going to be a local user. So we'll call that user two at liquidftest.com. We'll give that a password. Hopefully I'll type the same. So we now have a user two at liquidftest.com. And on this system, the old system, our current production system, let's also add a user one. Uh, user one and user one at liquidftest.com. Type some password, We're probably running a And that worked as well. So now we have a user one at liquidftest.com and we have a user two at liquidftest.com on this system. So we purposely obviously made these different so that it becomes obvious what to do. Or oh, sorry, not what to do, but what happens when we're doing these migrations. So for this final migration now, instead of using the console, and we can, we, we, we can no longer use the console on the on the production machine so if we go to the f2 setup menu we no longer have the option of doing the migration and that's because we uh, it's it wouldn't be a good uh, position if we migrate in a production system uh, uh, without any form of authentication or anything like that so as soon as the system is up and running in a production state that option disappears we can no longer run that option so instead, what we're going to do is that we are going to use SSH. So in this case, we have a terminal or rather two terminals logged on with SSH. So the, so the terminal window, the SSH window to the left, we are logged on to the files.liquidftest.com system. And on this system, we are logged on to the version 4 system here. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the procedure is going to be very similar. So on this, we're, we're running F, F2 migrate. And this is also the procedure that you would use if you are running, if this is in the cloud. So, this, uh, so, so both of these systems are running in, say, it could be that this runs, the, the, the old production system is running in AWS and you're migrating to Microsoft Azure or vice versa, so you don't have console access to these system, but you can SSH into them, so this is what you would do. So migrate from this system, and in this case, we select option number two, continue and disable. So from now on, no, we don't want anyone to, uh, to, to use this system to the left. So we disable that system, we stop stopping the web service we can see here, and we have a new password that we are going to copy. On this system, we're going to run the same FT migrate uh, command. And we are going to migrate to the system. So are we sure we want to continue? Yes, we want to continue. We are migrating from 1.16.5.128 and the password is copied. We could copy the certificates, uh, but we still, uh, oh, let's copy the certificates. The rsync con connection works fine. We will be giving a 10 second grace period before the migration starts in case you realize like, oh, I wasn't meant to do that. So you have 10 seconds to make that judgment call, or this will start and the migration starts now. So we can see this will go even faster than the previous one. So what happens is that only the changes from the, from, uh, from the previous system will be copied over. So if, this, if, so if you had like 100 gigabytes of data on this system, and the first migration copied 95 of those, then the next, so there's like been five gigs of data that has been added, 
then only those five gigs of data will be copied over. So the second or final migration will be a lot faster than, uh, than the previous one, the first one. And the migration is complete. So if we now look at this system, we reload this page, we get this connection is not private. And we get this because the SSL certificate has now changed. Uh, we are in, in Chrome and incognito mode, which is helpful when we are dealing with certificates and stuff like that because we don't have to deal with HTST. So we got logged out because the database has changed, but we can still log on to this system with the same username and password. And if we look in the users, we can see that the user2 user has been removed and the user1 system is here. So same as what we had on this system. So when, whenever you're doing migration, if you do this in a couple of steps, every time you do this, there's no form of like merge that happens. This is a straight copy uh, where we are making the destination system a identical replica of the source system. One final thing that we need to look at in terms of this, uh, this migration uh, that you will, that is the next step. So we have now uh, migrated the system across to the system, you know, with the IP, IP address of 172.16.252.224. And the name files of liquid ftest is still pointing to this system with the IP address of 172.16.5.128. Uh, so we have basically two options. We can look in the, in the DNS, and in this case, this, because this is an internal test system, this is, has in the DNS configuration that we have for the liquidftest.com domain. It is pointing to, an internal to this internal address of this system. So the two options that we have is that we can either update DNS here to change this to the 252.224 uh, address for this system or we can change the IP address of this system so well if we use DN DHCP then we can use it in our DHCP server or we can update this to say that we want this address to be 5.2 one to one to eight. In this case, that that will be in a in a different uh, in a different network. Uh, so we have to make sure that we uh, that we update this. So we have those two options. We can either update the DNS to point to this IP address, or we can make this system uh, having the same IP address as this system. And obviously, if we do, this system has to be shut down first. So that completes the migration of uh, of this liquid file system. We have uh, we have now we have successfully migrated users data the system. We can still look at a, at some system configuration. Maybe we want to change this host name to say uh, filesliquidftest.com. We can make sure that all the uh, all the net all the network configuration matches everything and so on. Uh, but the migration has now completed. We did this in two steps uh, so that we could test the configuration first and then we did the final migration. So hope you uh, hope you find that useful and uh, hope you will enjoy your liquid files migrations. Thank you.